Hey guys, and welcome back to Night Cry. When we last left off, we'd managed to make us uh, make our way back up to the movie theater. We did bump into Angie down uh, in the clothes store, gave her the wedding ring, uh, and she gave us our final set of balls, or at least she gave us the last to complete our set of balls. So now we have a full bag. Uh, right, let's get out of here. Come on, Rooney, up the stairs. I know it's hard. Uh-oh. Oh no. There is the scissor walker waiting for us. Oh, apparently the game was still playing. <laughs> I had no idea. Right, come on, you big old bastard. Get off me. There we go. Come on, Rooney, down the stairs. No, we've got to go down the stairs, Rooney. There you go. I know. Come on. Oh, oh it's... Why, why is it like this? <laughs> this game is so bad. Oh. Like, literally, the, the biggest enemy of this game isn't the monster. It's the controls. I swear to God. Like, come on. Come on. Keep moving. There we go. That's it. One foot in front of the other. Do your goblin stride. No, no, not your your goblin fall, your goblin stride. There we go. Oh, that was quite smooth. Now let's go hide in the clothes rack. Once more. Keep that mouth shut, Rooney. These moths everywhere. Oh, that sounded rather nasty. Well, thanks, Angie, for uh, buying the farm for us. Um, actually, yeah, that's kind of harsh, really. Uh, now, you can escape the monster uh, without sacrificing Angie, but if you do, well, not that it matters now, because I've already got it, but you get an achievement for it. And um, it it's like a, a free guaranteed win. The trouble is... <laughs> we don't have any save um any hiding spots left that we can use to hide right uh we're still using the same ones from the start of scene five i believe and we've worn them all out because remember viewers you could only use each say uh, each hiding spot once ask me how i know say titan how long have you been stuck on this particular scene how long a long time. I will just say that because uh, I have been frantically running around looking for a hiding spot that still works. And I didn't come in here for ages because we've already used this one. So I was a very angry man and I thought, fuck it. It's the only one we haven't tried again. And then Angela pops out and saves us. So, yeah, I've, I've got to stick that burst of frustration into this video because uh, for some reason, unlike Clock Tower, um, each say, uh, saving grace place can only be used once. I don't know why. It seems to be really stupid, but that's how it be. The woman is no longer breathing. Nonetheless, she clutches a pair of wedding rings in her left hand. One hers, the other her husband's. Yep, really lame because... Oh, she's been ripped, split right open. That's kind of cool. If you examine her with the light on, she's lit up. Whereas if you examine her without the light on, it's a lot darker. Obviously, right? You know. But with this game, there are no guarantees like that. Anyway, that's the last time we're going to have to deal with him. 
So I'm reasonably happy. Yeah, uh, I was so stuck. I, I literally was at the point where I'm like, that's it. We're fucked. We have nowhere to hide. I double checked my guide that I, I've been referencing. And uh, yep, we've used every hiding spot. But I guess because some people have completed this game without getting this achievement. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know whether it's a percentage chance thing. I, I, I don't know. I'm not going to worry about it because this game doesn't warrant such deep thoughts. But enough about that. We survived for now. So let's continue our survival. And we want to be going this way. Now we have almost a full set anyway. I, I wish it was four balls because then I could say we got a quad. But I guess unless you played Mass Effect, that's lost on you. Let's keep going. Come on, Rooney. You're so close now, my dear. You're so close. This torment is nearly over. No, we don't want the phone. We want the VIP card. Let's get going. Oh, that's interesting. We didn't get the bit of dialogue. I say dialogue, it's not really dialogue. She just says like, oh, Eric, you managed to get the power back on. And something to that effect anyway. All right, let's go. I'm glad Rooney knows which button to push. There are nine buttons there, but she pushes the right one. Kind of makes me think of the religious folks, you know. There are many, many gods out there, but they all believe in the right one. Anyway, let's keep moving. Very lavish halls here. Right, well, what do we have here? We have a computer. We have some books. This place looks fancy. Folders line the shelves. Personal evaluation records are written on the spines of several files. They all appear to be related to day-to-day -day business workings. Okay. What is this? Ugh, what is this? A nondescript flesh heap is sprawled across the floor. There is no telling what it might have originally been. Gives off a repulsive stench of blood and death. Yeah, yeah, not really what you want to see in the middle of the room, but hey, whatever. The table has been polished immaculately, but closer inspection reveals the faint imprint of blood trailing from the edge of the table towards the centre. Okay, that's a very, very detailed description there, Rooney. Really. Fair, fair. Anyway, let's go take a look at this computer, shall we? It appears somebody was working on this computer. Windows displaying text files and machine learning and a machine learning translation website have been left open. Looks like they were trying to translate some Russian text. Was the captain trying to decipher this text? Maybe, maybe he was. What do we have here? The book is open on on page where passenger, th oh, th they're almost definitely a diary. Upon in closer inspection, the entries on each page appear to have been signed by Vigo Borisov. Vigo, Monica mentioned him, the ship's owner. Yeah, again, we've got some really um, inconsistently uh, timed and paced subtitles there. One second, guys. Hmm, okay. Let's examine the computer again. Oh, it looks like somebody was trying to translate the diary of a man called Vigo. The page displays text which reads like a clumsy machine translation. My daughter, Yolanda, who carries the sacred one, will finally gain my child. Before this result was confirmed, how many days and nights were exchanged? My daughter, who carried the immortal child, should gain the right to exceed humans next to Babylon the Great. Another one is the illegitimate child, Otto. He, who is my son, is my grandchild and catalyst. In the water that represents the people, a cocoon is reborn into a beautiful moth because Yolanda is waiting. Cut part of this... Uh, Cut apart from this world and capture freedom. I can hear their joyous voices. 
Well, that was a whole load of nonsense. Anyway, let's get out of here. So we've done everything we need to in there. Now, this is where the balls come into play. <laughs> so, these round parts appear to be switches. Okay, again, it just skips past. Well, we have some balls. We have seven, six, and one. Now, these are arranged in a billiard pattern. Uh, I don't know why. Don't question it. Now, oh, Jerome, didn't see this. Dearest Rooney, since you were kind enough to take an interest in the Patriarch's tonophy, let me tell you who was triumphant. Well, the good thing, this is also important for what's coming up next. Okay, if we scroll all the way down, we can see one, six, and seven. One, six, seven. So that gives us the buttons that we need to push. Now, I don't think this actually has to be done in any particular order. We just have to get the right buttons. <gasps> it opened. It did indeed. So let's keep going. Onwards and upwards, huh? Now let's search this top drawer. We have to search this top drawer. A framed picture it appears to be an old family photo. What in the? It's the same as Jerome's family photo. <gasps> Shocking. Why would this be in Vigo's quarters? Why indeed? Why indeed? Anyway. Most of the books appear to be written entirely in Russian. I can barely decipher the titles in Russian, let alone read them. Okay, well, let's not worry too much about that then. A beaker and spirit lamp sit atop the desk. The beaker appears to be empty. Come to think of it, Monica said the ship's owner sterilized his false eye by boiling it. So these must be the utensils he uses for that. Aye. <gasps> this couldn't be real skin, could it? Oh, probably. It probably is real skin, Rooney. I mean, would that be the most shocking thing that you've seen today? I'd wager not. Is this safe unlocked? How careless. Maybe they were distracted and forgot to close it. What's this? Inside the safe, there's a velvet case with white with a white sphere packed inside it. It looks like the case originally housed two spheres. One of the two indented pedestals is empty. Is this what I think it is? A false eye? Yes, Rooney, yes, it's a false eye. I can see it, you can see it, every fucker can see it, all right? I don't know why we're doing this, okay? I really don't. It's a fucking false eye next to a stash of cash, right? Pocket both of these things. The prosthetic eye is finely constructed. On the back of it, where the optic nerves would normally be, small writing is engraved in a circular formation. I wonder what they mean. I've never seen letters like these before. Well, there we go. You found an item. The eye of Cassites? Kass Cassites? Something. A magical eye. Okay. Right. Let's have a little look here. Notes and writing. Implements are scattered across the desk. They are. These notes are all in Russian. I can't understand any of it. Each note seems to be a list. Uh, to list of recent time and date, though. I see. Well, let's have a little look here. Looks like we've got a little book puzzle here. Now, if you notice what's on the spines of all of these, this is the uh, nonsense that Jerome was talking about. So we need love. We need modesty. Uh, which is that one? Oh, no. We need Mort, which is death. We need uh, fame. We need tempo. And last but not least, Eternia. There we go. 
and job should be a good one. You'll see the books on this case glitch out wildly as it moves. And a secret door awaits. <gasps> Let's keep going. Oh, we appear to have hit the back rooms. Rather shitty looking corridor. It's fine. Let's keep the light on, Rooney, shall we? Let's see where this stairway... Oh, this ladder leads straight down the depths. Let's hope it goes somewhere good. Probably a nice little party through here, I'd assume. That's what I would assume, anyway. You know, we are on a party cruiser. After all... Oh! Back into the ballroom, I guess. Where we started. Yeah, it looks like a party, all right. Beautiful. Stop making noises, Rooney. Come on. Pull yourself together, woman. Unlike these guys, who have, I guess... Yeah, somebody's pulling strings around here. <laughs> yes. Oh no, this is. Um, oh no, this is. Yeah, this. The, that's the girl from the beginning. Uh, one of Monica's friends. Uh, I think like everybody that we've uh, encountered. Oh, one is not like the others. I didn't notice that first time around. Um, yeah, all these people are people we've seen in the game. Oh, look, that's our friend that we phoned. Yeah, she was the one. Um, I forget her name now. She was that memorable. They've all been slashed up, though. Not great. You know, pretty, pretty uh, bad way to go. Anyway, let's go. Uh, up to this mystery man. Gee, who might that be? I'm surprised to think someone outside our brotherhood has made it this far. <gasps> I know you. That's right. I'm Vigo Baratsov, the owner of this ship. We met in the cargo hold, Rooney. A belated greeting. Welcome to the Oceanus. I hope you enjoy your cruise with us to our eternal paradise. Uh, uh... No! Let go of me! No! Uh, uh, no! Mm, no! Uh, 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 uh. Don't struggle, Rui. Really. Father is going to take us to eternity. <gasps> You okay, Rooney? Monica, what are you doing here? I told you I would be right behind you. Jerome? Forget about him. It doesn't matter how much of a big shot celebrity he is if he's lost his mind. <laughs> I like Monica here. She's grown some balls. Stupid door! Why won't you open? Well, that does look like she's kind of slapping us in the back of the head. Now, we have the eye, which means we have the power. Somehow. Don't question it. <sighs> I was starting to like you, Monica. But that was just painful. You're right. Sorry, Monica. I'm gonna survive. No matter what it takes. Uh-huh. No matter the cost. <laughs> Rooney? Uh, 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 uh,
revenge is yours! Destroy the man who turned you into a monster! <sighs> Wait! <coughs> Wait! This can't be! No! <laughs> no! No! This no. can't be! Wait! <laughs> no. no! Hey! No, no, no! Wait! Wait! No, wait! No, wait, wait, no, no, wait, no. Oh, fucking hell, just get it over. <laughs> hey, at least he became a fountain. We should all be so lucky, right? And that is the game. Now, if you're left with a few questions, uh, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't be at all surprised. Like, what was the end goal? Was it just to murder everybody? What's all this talk of eternal paradise? And why, for a man who was so neck deep in uh, the occult, was he suddenly very afraid to die at the end? Is that not what he wanted to happen? I don't know, man. This game... And what possessed Rooney to tear her eye out and use the eye to control the monster? And how comes Rooney's eye had dominance over Vigo's eye? I, I, you know, I'm just not going to think about it that much. Um, but yeah, that that's Nightcry. Um, I'm going to say it, it. That was up there with the worst games that I've ever played. But interesting enough with this game with a few little with a few little changes it could have gone up from dog shit to standard shit you know i don't know what the difference between standard shit and dog shit but one is less stinky uh if the game controlled better uh didn't have as many glitches like sound cutting out a little bit more animation I think it could have been passable, but I don't even think this game is passable. It's just garbo. Let's forget about the story, okay, and the characters. Just from a playable experience, this game is bad. It's the worst that I have played in a very, very long time. I think the story could have become something interesting if there was just more of it and it was there was more cohesion because apart from to just kill everybody on his ship we still don't really understand what was going on we don't understand why Leonard was stripped of his skin and left in a bath full of water or viscous liquid I should say it just Nothing in this game makes a lot of sense. It was just a load of random ideas thrown together in a very haphazard way and just came out like an amalgamation of shit, really. Um, some parts have sound effects, some parts don't. Some parts have some pretty passable and okay music. Some parts have nothing. I... Uh, and that's without getting into how shitty the company is uh, that actually created this game. And how they really screwed over the backers. Uh, we're not even going to get into that. Because that's neither here nor there, really. We're just talking about the game as the game is. And it's not good. Do, uh, 
I, it's very, very rare that I can just say this game is not worth your time. It's not worth playing. But this is one of those games that just should be avoided. There's nothing here. There's no redeeming qualities at all. Um, look at all these people that worked on it. What did they do? They sit in a corner with a thumb up their ass? Like, oh, I, I have no idea. I have no idea. Look, so here are the backers. You poor, unfortunate souls. <sighs> what a shame. But yeah, with, a, with tightening up the gameplay mechanics and improving the chase scenes, the chase scenes were so bad. Uh, they're actually the worst chase scenes that I have personally experienced that I can think of. And I mean that. That's from the heart, that is. Uh, the Scissor Walker was just a really questionable design. Like, if you see a static image of it, I suppose it's okay. I guess. And I do mean, like, okay. I don't mean top tier. I mean, it, it's just about a passable monster. But it had no animations, it had no presence really, it wasn't intimidating, it had, you know, the big ass pair of cartoony shears, including a, a spring and everything. It just, it was just irritating. The fact that it was actually faster than you as well was annoying, uh, especially with the chase mechanics being as bad as they actually were, you know, uh, running away from an enemy was literally a gamble. The hiding spots were so few and far between, and again, like we've already said, could only be used once. Which, you know, if you're gonna do that, if you're gonna have it so each thing can only be used once, that's fine, not a problem. But maybe add more, <laughs> so you're not running around for ages trying to find the one place uh, that you haven't used yet. Okay. Uh, and then when you die, you've got to replay all the way back up to where you uh, encountered the Scissor Walker again, just for another attempt. And replaying sections in this game. Although you don't really do much, it is just wandering from one area to the, to the next with a couple of um, key items. It's so good damn slow it's oh, I don't know if this is worse than ghost head I, I don't I'm gonna you know what I'm gonna say no ghost head was definitely like a little echelon of shit above this I guess um, but it was nowhere near as good as like the first two clock tower games the original two uh, ghost head obviously being the third one what a disappointment <clears throat> but, you know, I <laughs> I am going to say I appreciate uh, it being sent over to me. I now know definitively that this game is uh, not worth anyone's money. And hopefully, if I can just discourage one person from buying it, then this has not been in vain. So, we're on 29 minutes here. I'm going to leave it here. That was my thoughts. This game is fucking shit. Avoid it. And I will be back with the uh, bonus all endings. So, thanks for watching, guys. And as always, till next time.